exciting news for us, so we're, we're, we're glad to get it going. Awesome, awesome. So I had I had a, a question for you. With, with this this training camp in particular uh, with Deontay, what is it that you, that you and him both worked on extensively from what he did, um, say, in his last fight? Mm -hmm. Well, mostly we're working on getting over the mental challenges of not having fights. You know, like um, we've got some new things coming on that we feel like we'll be able to be a little more active, but it's been November since we fought, so... <clears throat> one of the biggest problems was getting you know, just getting ourselves both in the mindset to think positively and to believe that everything's going to happen the way we want it. We're working on, uh, we're talking to some people um, with some big promotional companies to try to get them signed. Um, so we got two more fights lined up now where, you know, once we get through those and we can get some good footage, we think we'll be good to go on that. So it's just more than anything, just keeping them mentally focused and and driven and yeah, maybe working on his jab a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> right. So on September 15th, we definitely have a, 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 a fight card that's going to be here in at Atlanta. The, yeah, at the Fight Club, right. At the Fight Club. It's going to be uh, promoted by Mark Holmes. So um, I'll be producing the show for him. He's going to be promoting it. And we've got, you know, Johnny's going to be involved as well. So we've got a whole lot going on with that show. It should be a great show. Right, awesome. Is it? Uh, will we be able to uh, see guys like Bill Abadicio, uh, Chino, and any oh, of those definitely. within the ring? We're getting ready to turn those two guys pro. <laughs> awesome. So, end of September, we'll be turning um, Abel and Chino pro. We've already got some things lined up for them. Um, so, what we'll do is we'll fight them on our show, and then probably it's actually the following week they're going to be making their pro debut. So, oh, wow. um, and that way, the next time, the next show, they'll be fighting in the pros. So, we'll be excited for that. But, um, yeah, we'll have a. We'll, we're going to do some amateurs as well. Um, so we have a good pro am card. And if you were at our first show, um, we hope it'll be a, uh, you know, a shadow of that that card and get it off the ground really well. It's. I'm. We're sure we're going to do it. We're going to have a, a you know really good local card and some international fighters as well. Oh, most definitely, definitely yeah. can't can't wait on that. I know who we had on the last card um it was helen helen joseph right and i know she went on to fight uh teresha douglas uh for the title that she right, right. won Did they fight um, at the bucket they already fought but the fight ended in a draw wow. but i think it was a it was a really good fight right. at the same time but i want to get your take on what it, what it, what is it that you see what's going on in women's boxing right now because you have some great young female fighters who are up and coming but they really, truly haven't mm, impressed anybody as of yet besides uh, Katie Taylor. Well, I was about to say they're looking in the wrong place. <laughs> Katie Taylor is impressive. Yes, so, she is. <clears throat> I think that a lot of that just um, hinges on the fact that they're not giving them quality fights. I mean, for Clarissa Shields, unfortunately, there aren't a lot of fights that are very competitive in that weight class. So um, she's, she's fighting, you know, some of the top names up there, you know, that she can she can get that she can get right now, but that that particular pool isn't very deep, you know. So, um, but the lightweights, there's a lot going on with that. Um, I've seen a couple of uh, the fights from Michaela Mayer and Marlon Esparza. You know, they're okay. They could up the ante on those fights a little bit, but Kaylee Taylor is not playing. So, I At think all. you know she's coming to the stage. She's fighting in New York. Um, she's fighting under some of the other Irish cards. <laughs> You know, our highly um, dense Irish card. So um, I feel like she's going to dominate the United States when she comes here. And I'm, I'm excited to see it because I've always been a big fan of hers. Right. But, um, you know, hopefully somebody can step to the plate and challenge her. I'm sure that her and Michaela Mayer will fight eventually. They've fought before in the amateurs. So, um, but um, I know that's going to be, uh, they want to build Michaela Mayer up for that for sure. So, um, I mean, she's quality. And, of course, she's been to the Olympics and everything. But um, I feel like Katie is definitely the real thing for the sport of boxing. Like she's not just a great women, women's fighter, she's a great fighter. She um, she represents the sport in a really positive way. But quite frankly, there are a lot of female fighters out there that do their, um, there's some like in Brazil and some in Mexico and these girls are really good fighters. Um, they're just they're just not brought to the state. So the American fighters are, uh, for the females, you know, I mean, they probably have the least selective, you know, right. uh, uh, type of fights out there, you know. The, if, and a lot of that comes behind the fact that the promoters won't put them in quality fights. Um, they won't risk a record, you know. They won't um, really pay the money to get them in a real fight. So I think it has a lot to do with that. You know, real fights cost money. Hence the problem we're having. Right. You know, uh, we need money to get good fights. So, you know, quality fights don't come cheap, but the bad fights do. So I think that has a lot to do with what's going on with women's boxing in the States is they're just really not putting the money into it. Not into marketing it, not into the fights. You know what I'm saying? To get, get quality matches out there for it. But if they would do that, Eventually they'll have to, but 
Katie Taylor's people will do it. <laughs> right. So right now, right. Katie Taylor is is at the helm. That and I definitely have her right there uh, at the helm. And then when we talk yeah, I think about she's pound for pound in women's boxing. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. Then when you talk about the young young female fighters, uh, like you was just talking about earlier, getting good quality fights. I right. know uh, in the lightweight division, Alicia Bongoner, mm -hmm. uh, who signed right. to Real Deal Promotions, just took a loss on this past weekend, right. um, and, and lost her WBC international title. Right. But is it more so of like you was talking about not getting good quality fights in your career? Then when you do get an opportunity to step into the ring with somebody of a little bit more experience. Do, does that kind of expose the fighter a little bit more? Well, I think she was definitely exposed. But, you know, she, I mean, she's a great fighter, but she's not, you know, she's not an Olympian. You know, she's not, um, she's not, you know, she, she hasn't gone that, that distance. So, I mean, it's good that they challenged her, but that's what happened when they did. You know, she just probably wasn't ready. But, uh, again, this is where you run into the paper champions. You know, you want, I mean, unfortunately, women's boxing, right now needs to make a serious statement. We can't afford those kind of fighters to be the top fighters that we're putting out there right now. You know, she's a great fighter, don't get me wrong, but you understand what I'm saying. Like, the right. only re way that we're going to make this work right now is to be able to get some of the best of the best and put them against the best. And we got to come in with a big bang right now. I mean, they, you know, I, I get getting Clarissa Shields a, a title or three or four belts after five fights or four. How many she got now? Like three, four? Yeah, I think uh, I mean, three. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> You know, I get it. She's not a Lomachenko, you know what I'm saying? But I do, I really like her. She's a two-time gold medalist, but that pool, of, like I said, that pool doesn't render her that kind of situation. You know, I think that, I mean, I think they're taking the ones like her and they're moving them in a way that isn't quite challenging enough, you know what I'm saying? And then on the flip side, you know, um, like like the real deal um, female, I, I totally forgot her name. Alisa Bongano. Yeah, Bongano, yeah. So uh, like her, you know, you got... She's somebody who probably needed to be built. You know what I'm saying? She shouldn't have. How many? I'm not quite sure how many pro fights she has now. She's only had. This, that would have been her seventh pro fight, so she's now six and one. Yeah, I mean that doesn't make any sense that she's even got a title right now. I mean she's not. You know you understand what I'm saying? It's like most definitely. If you want women to be considered equal to the men as far as the, the fight game, you gotta treat them like fighters. You know this isn't like a sideshow where you get just some you know anybody a title at five five fights or something like that. No, uh, granted, it's an international title, but even the men, you know, you got to get 10, 14 fights before you can do that. I mean, how many rounds was that title? Was it? Right, it was an uh, eight round. Yeah, eight rounder. Um, you know, I'm not real privy to that, so you're asking the wrong person. <laughs> right. But I, and I appreciate, uh, you know, uh, what kind of fighter she is and what kind of fighter all, all of us are. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm one to talk. I mean, back when I was fighting, there were like women fighting in the pros. So, but but now we have them, you know. So, I just think that it's up to the American promoters to put a little more money and a little more time into these fights, into building the fighters, and then getting them the right fights um, that are going to challenge the sport and bringing those Olympians in that are already kicking butt. Let's go on and put them in heavy. You know, what I'm saying not 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 build them along like they're they've had you know 20 amateur fights. Right. So it's like, you know, I, I, I just feel like it's not really being handled right. But, you know, they'll get it eventually, at least for this far. So I'm not going to gripe about it. This is further than we've been ever. So Absolutely. Yeah. How did you feel about the, uh, the the Kaylee Reese and Cecilia Brickers unification bout? Yeah. Uh, feel, that, that made history for, uh, for women's boxing, being right, the first right, televised. Right. Yeah. I mean, I was there when uh, Kaylee Reese got her first title. So, I mean, I, I actually like her as a fighter. So, um, right. no, I think those are the kind of fights we need. You know what I'm saying? Those are good fights, I think. That's, that, that's that's a quality fight right there. So awesome, you can't beat that. So do yeah. so right now. If you had to choose between Christina Hammer versus Clarissa Shields, would you be going with Team Hammer or Team um, Shields? I think Christina Hammer's been built the proper way. I think Clarissa can beat her um, if she listens to her trainers. <laughs> right. You know, she. Did, I mean, I think that um, she didn't really come out uh, out of the out of the. When she went pro, I wasn't super impressed with what I saw in the beginning because it's like I saw a fighter that's been around in USA Boxing to training camps and here and there and having 15 different trainers and she's not grounded anymore. I mean, she needs to get grounded back with that one trainer that knows what to tell her, that knows how to get in her head and how to chill her out in the ring and to make her follow protocol, you know, and, and technically do what she needs to do. If she's technically sound, she just doesn't always show that. So, you know, she needs to settle down in the ram. Her last fight looked a lot better. So, but, you know, I don't think it was a good representation of her skill or of the sport when she first came into the pros. So I think that the best thing for her to do is just get with that trainer, 
you know, I mean, she, it's, it's like she's homebound now, so it's time to, you train like a pro, you fight like a pro, you know, you got one trainer, that's where you need to stay, <laughs> which we just had this conversation, so. Right, right. I mean, unfortunately, that's what, what USA Boxing does, is it, it gets the fighters where, even I talked to Michaela Mayer, because they've all fought in my gym at the Fight Club, and um, I was talking to them, you know, how do you guys deal with having your trainer at home, the guy who brought you up to this level, and then you have to go train with all these other people that are basically just coaches that manage to get through the right clinics to be certified to be a USA Boxing. It's not really based on merit or skill, you know, or, or how many wins. If you get, you got a fighter that made it to the nationals, you know, and you can go through level four coaching, then you can be at the Olympic Training Center. I think that's, you know, I mean, boxing isn't something you can just take a class for. You know what I'm saying? There, you, you still have to understand the game and you can, you know, some people can be trainers for 20 years and they're still not a good trainer. You know what I'm saying? So it, it really just, it's, it's like it's like being an athlete. You just have to be a good, they're great trainers and they're not great trainers. You know, but, but with the way that USA Boxing does it, it has nothing to do with recognizing the quality of the trainer, the ability of the trainer to understand the fighter, to understand the fight game, to have the experience to strategize, you know, all those things. I mean, they're looking at papers, you know, and that just doesn't work in my opinion. So um, that's why we have the crappy outcome we've had in the last so many Olympics. <laughs> I don't know, they, they, they right. used to pull quality trainers, but I'm not saying that they're not quality trainers, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not slashing anybody up. I'm just saying that, that the protocol doesn't really work for creating winning fighters, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, it's just, you know, so what it does to the fighters on top of that is it, it, it gets them where they listen to a thousand people, and this is exactly what Michaela Mayer told me. I said, how do you know, how can you trust what they're telling you? She said, you just have to pick it pick and sort through it and take what you think is good and leave the rest out. So basically what that teaches the fighters to do is think for themselves and not listen to their trainer. And granted, you want to think for yourself, but you need to listen to your trainer. Right. Because fighters don't always think the right thing. I was a fighter, I know. Like they don't always make the best decisions. They fight off of their gut and their heart and their emotions. But you need somebody that can go in there and be on the outside and give you the technical instruction that you need, knowing what's in your head, not just anybody's head, but your head. So, I mean, there's a wisdom that you need to be a good trainer. And, you know, you just won't find it in that that kind of, uh, you know, especially like for Clar Clarissa, she's been in there for two Olympiads. I mean, she's been, and Michaela Mayer basically lived at the Olympic Training Center. I mean, she took some of her, her coaches with her, you know what I'm saying, from the Olympic Training Center. So, um, but I just think it, it makes it tough for them to make that transition into the gut and the, you know, the guts and the, the, the solidarity that's needed to, to get through the pros at a high level of, you know, competition, at a high level of uh, um, fitness. You know, you got to be able to get through 10 rounds, you know, or 12 rounds for the guys, you know what I'm saying? Or even for the ladies, sometimes it's 12 rounds. So, you know, it, it's like they got to understand you as a person when there's nothing left in your body and you're just working off a habit and hearing your trainer. You know, you got to be tuned into being able to do that, you know. So, I don't know. That's my opinion. You know, as you can see, I'm not a super fan. But, right, 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 right. <laughs> But that's just my opinion. You can take it or leave it. But um, anyway, um, I think that's you know that's kind of you know what what would help the situation, especially for Clarissa. And but but again, I see Michaela has her um, that coach Al. I think she had him in the training center or whatever. But she seems to have a real close personal relationship to him. So um, but I don't think Clarissa really had that with a lot of other trainers in the in the Olympic Training Center, maybe she's just her trainer now. And even in the beginning, of like her first and her second fight, I could see her trainer trying to get her under control a little bit. So um, that's really where she just needs to make that transition, in my opinion, you know, it'll help her a lot. But you know, I don't, I don't think she's gonna be beaten mentally. She doesn't believe it. So right. she'll pull it out in the end with Christina Hammer too. I, I really see her being able to pull that out. I, I don't see her losing her head, you know, but um, Hopefully together, her and a trainer can pull it out. But Christina's supposedly a good boxer, you know. I mean, I've seen a few right. fights. She's long, she's tall, she moves, she jabs. That's the most important thing. I, I think if I was fighting Clarissa, that would be my number one strategy. So maybe they feel like that's how they're going to win, you know. It's a busy jab. Just, as I say, put that stick in her face constantly. You never know. I mean, Clar I mean, uh, Christina Hammer is a great fighter. She's been, you know, in Germany, they do it right over there. And all over, the, you know, Europe, they, they build their women fighters the right way. Regina Helmich was amazing. I mean, oh, yes. I mean, that, not only that, but she was a fighter. She was a real fighter and she performed, you know what I'm saying? And they built her up right. I mean, uh, uh, the Americans need to take some lessons from Europe and Mexico and Brazil. Most definitely. And all those places over there where, you know, the, the women actually are treated like real fighters and they perform like real fighters. So. Most definitely. And, uh, well, anyway, it's my two cents. <laughs> sep but you say September 15th. Atlanta, right. Atlanta. At, the, at Buckhead Fight Club. Um, 
uh, Mark Holmes. He's Larry Holmes' brother. He's amazing. Just got introduced into the um, Philadelphia Boxing Hall of Fame, so he's super excited about that. I think he sleep and might be right, right, he's right, right there. there. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. talked to him. <laughs> and um, um, so now he's getting back into promotion. It's been a while, but so, and I'm super excited to produce the shows for him. But he's the promoter. I'm the producer that gives us a, a chance for us both to do what we do best, you know. So. Right. Um, we're, we're super excited and I hope it's going to be a really good boxing series and we want the best local fighters and you know to get on the cards and uh, put them out there so if anybody locally has you know give us a call we haven't quite set the card in stone so uh, the local fighters we want you uh, we want to fighters that are going to get out there pack the house so and perform and look great. So awesome. Really so, well, we definitely can't, uh, won't be missing that, and can't wait for that to happen at all. Period. So, definitely, Terry, thank you for your time and, and giving us the opportunity to, to come out, see the new gym, get to hear the new news and of what's, what's going on. We're going back to the old gym, but it really won't be the old gym. It'll be a old new new old gym. Old new gym. Yeah, I always want yeah. to put more rings in there. So, so. four rings. Yeah, four oh rings. man, it's going to be awesome. I'm, we want it to be like Gleason's eventually. You know, just come in, it's just chaos of boxing. It's like Before you know it, we could be like hosting amateur uh, tournaments oh, well, we've with already the four done rings that. in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, that'd be well, crazy. Well, I'm not saying the others are, are, are going to be um, competition rings. So um, these are training rings, which means they're a little bit smaller. Um, we want them to be get in there and work, you know, so it's, these are going to be more like training rings. So. Oh, but we'll, we'll still definitely. be set up for the shows, uh, the big shows and little shows. Oh, well, we can't wait on that. Right. So, again, Terry, thank you for your time. Everybody, make sure you go ahead and follow T Monster Boss on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Yep, all of it. And Twitter, all social medias, and follow Buckhead Fight Club as well on all social media platforms. And Atlanta Art of Boxing. And we're Atlanta Art of so, Boxing. Yeah, we want all of uh, Johnny's old clients and uh, fighters to get back with him and come on back in. You know, we're super excited. I'm, I'm really excited to work with him. He's just a great guy. He's got like so much depth in boxing and his history in him. It's an honor to have him in there. So. Right. I asked him a question in particular. I said, "Well, what is it about Terry that you really that that you really really like, and what made you form a really good working relationship?" And he said, "She gets things taken care of." <laughs> it's true. <laughs> she, we get things done. She don't mess around. She get things taken <laughs> right, care right, of, right. and 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 that's and that's what I've known you to do is always get things taken care of. Yeah. Whether you if it's if it's at the weigh-in or fight night, you know you're you're on it, right, and right. and and things come into flow. And, and they're definitely coming to fruition now right. and I'm definitely looking forward to uh, big things in the future for BFC We're so excited. and Atlanta yeah. Art of Boxing yeah. so I, I can't wait thank you thank for you the again interview, Jeremy, as always thank you all right